So we are all heading for a photo walk today. They asked me last night to present for about 15 minutes prior to the walk to talk about some of the things we're going to learn and try. So I whipped this together. Like I said, I had a couple glasses of champagne, so this should be one of the more interesting presentations. I don't even know what the heck it says. We'll find out as we go. Um, but uh, I, wanted to th I wanted to kind of talk about some of the things we're going to see. Um, we just talked about the fact that we're going to be going to uh, Lincoln Center to shoot, and my wife said to me last night, shouldn't you go and scout it out and look and see wh where you want to shoot? Uh, and uh, I've been one time before at night, never been there during the day, or actually I have, but not for very long. And my answer was, no, I don't want to go early, I want to go with the group, because if this is a shoot that I was doing for real, I typically would do the same thing. I'll show up and look around and say, okay, based on the light we have today, we have overcast skies. Which, a lot of people, when I go to shoot events, they'd be like, oh, bummer, we have overcast skies. Love them. For portraits, it's best. We have two models today. Uh, we have uh, Elizabeth, we have Scott, who are in the back. They're going to be our models. This is perfect weather because the cloud cover basically creates a giant softbox in the sky. It's really nice. It's flattering. You don't get the harsh sunlight underneath the eyes. Um, it does mean that we shoot a little differently. So if we had direct sunlight, we might go ahead and turn them their backs to the sunlight and get rim light off of them and things we may not be able to do today, but that's okay. We're gonna talk about adding or subtracting light from portraits. So uh, what you do is you make with what you have. So when we get to uh, Lincoln Center, we're gonna look at different environments and what works and what may not work. So what I wanna do is I wanna talk about um, what we're gonna do with Elizabeth and Scott as we're cruising around here. So first of all, uh, we wanna look at for unique locations. Um, so, uh, as Deborah said, uh, Lincoln Center is a big place with lots of different things. You could shoot the entire scene and have the model smaller and off to the side, maybe, or you could just zoom in and just have the model's face. Like, I'm already looking at the columns and thinking that could be cool repetitive lines. So we want to kind of take the location and make it and make it work for us, okay? Um, the other thing is you want a location that emphasizes the model. So what you don't want to do is take someone who's in a ballet outfit, a ballerina, and put her by a swimming pool. And I see this a lot where people take someone in a bikini and put them in a farm. And it's like, well, I don't really get that. So, uh, or someone in a tux by a swimming pool. I mean, like, you want to make sure that the scene makes sense. We want to look for good light. Uh, good light, obviously, in photography is almost everything. So you want to make sure that you have flattering light when we're photographing. So we're going to look, get there, and we're going to say what works and what doesn't work. And you know what? Hang with me, and we're going to experiment. And you know what? We might try some shots. Oh, that just didn't work. And we'll move on. So part of photography is trying something different and experimenting. So, um, and the good thing is, we all have our Lexar memory cards. Lexar is sponsoring this walk, so thank you to Lexar. But, you know, with large memory cards, I've got 128 gig. We can take a bunch of shots, and if they don't come out, we don't care. We'll just delete them and move on. Um, interesting artifacts. So here's the thing. We have two models, and we have a lot of people. It doesn't mean you have to shoot the models. There are other things there which I think would be really interesting, right? Whether it's architecture or maybe reflections or whatever. So don't just think about the models. Think about other opportunities that are there. Okay? So let's talk about the location. The right light, I already mentioned this before, it's really important. When I shoot portraits, I wanna make sure I've got light that's gonna be flattering. I wanna make sure there's nothing distracting in the foreground or background. I always tell people that the worst the case is you see a beautiful family portrait and a garbage can next to them, <laughs> right? Now, we're gonna have that when we're out doing a photo walk. So what do you do? If you've got a model, either have them block that distraction or you get low or you move to a different location where you don't see those distractions. Now, at the same time, there's some really pretty things there. There's backgrounds or arches we may want to use as, as a tool to make it more interesting. Good lines. I like to find repetitive lines or things that work or a line that will draw attention to the model, and we're going to look for that today, too. I mentioned clean foreground and background. I like to, um, to, to have it clean and have the focus on the eyes of the model. Typically, if your focus is not on their eye, it's not a good shot. So I like to have the focus on them, and a lot of times I will shoot at f4 or 2.8 and blur everything in the foreground and background so that people are looking at their eyes and being kind of captivated by that. Complementing colors. What you don't want to do is if, if our model's wearing all green, you probably don't want them standing next to a green bush. because They're going like, to just kind of go into it. Whereas if they're wearing red, maybe that works. So look at what they're wearing and see what works for our backgrounds and our foregrounds with that. I love reflections, 
So um, I will uh, sometimes look for that in the windows and shoot off of that. You'll see that in some of these examples. So this is an example I shot a portrait where I went um, very narrow uh, depth of field. You'll see it's out of focus, in focus for her eyes, and out of focus in the background. Here, talk about shooting in context. This is my nephew. He wanted to be a fireman. So we went to the local firehouse and asked him if we could go shoot there. It makes sense. These girls uh, were graduating, and I used the curvature of this pathway to take you into the photo. So I'm using the environment to, to kind of help me with that photo. I talked about reflections. This is one I shot recently in San Francisco, and this is just a reflection off of a window at Golden Gate Park where it was kind of cool because it kind of shows two of her, kind of like that. Repetitive lines. This is at Stanford University uh, for a senior portrait, and I love the pillars. So I use that, again, it kind of takes your attention. It's still on the model, still on my subject, and then kind of goes off from there. I had to throw this one in, because they're here. This was yesterday on the Brooklyn Bridge, and uh, now I owe them modeling fees. <laughs> All right, a light. Let's talk about light. Avoid, sp if you've got harsh light and harsh shadows in the same frame, don't shoot there, typically. Photography, you always break the rules, but if you've got spots of light on them, move them. If you're in shadow and you have a big spot of light on their cheek, it's not gonna look good. Um, finding all sunlight or all shade, usually, not all the time, but I try to usually, I aim for shady environments, unless I'm gonna put them in the sun with their backs to the sun and use a flash to light them. Determine if you need to add light, or what I did put in here is to subtract light. I'm going to show you some shots in a second where we do that. And we can do that with flash or reflectors as far as adding light. And use shadows to your advantage. One of the things that you see a lot of when you see a picture of somebody is they're very lit by a direct flash and it's very flat. You want to have dimension. This is dimension. This is shadow to light. It, it makes it interesting. If this is fully lit, it wouldn't be as interesting. People are drawn to shadows and light. Same thing here, shadows on one side of his face to the lighter side of Billy's face. Same thing here, shadows from the coat on her face make it a little bit more interesting. That if, I, if I had blasted her straight on with a flash, it would not be a photo. This one here is really utilizing shadows. So this is shot manually, darkened. This is in a warehouse in Australia. And I just had him kind of lean down and look out the window. That's just window light but I went down like minus two, so I really darkened the scene to make it more interesting. Because frankly, what was behind him was really ugly. This shot, which we showed the other day, um, there's a guy that was just working in a blacksmith shop, but the shadows of the shot make the shot. So think about that. Don't just try to light the face all the way through. Try to do directional lighting. Posing. Uh, how are we doing for time? Just checking, okay. So study the model's face and body. Um, a lot of uh, models have, or all of us have a dominant eye, a little, little bit uh, larger. One of the things I'll look for uh, is to try to find that, or if they have a part in their hair, which way might look better for your photo. So study the symmetry of their body and their face and work with that. Have them change your expressions. And this is something I have to fight with still today when I shoot. Don't always have them smile. I was working with this one model and I, sh I was shooting it for half an hour smiling, and then I had her not smile, and I thought she looked better with kind of a, a neutral look on her face. It doesn't mean they have to look sad, but just maybe not smiling. So try different things, and don't always have them look at you. Like if you look at a lot of magazines, the models aren't looking at you. The models are looking off somewhere. Try that, okay? It's a good way to get a variety. And don't be afraid to direct them, to say to them, hey, Scott, Libby, uh, can you look out that way? Can you move your right hand a little bit right there? So feel free to direct them as you're shooting. I mentioned the hands. Watch the hands. They are the bane of photographer's existence. I can't tell you how many times I've shot photos where I'm like, oh, I really like that photo of that girl in the creek, except that her hands look like, oh my god, I'm trying to steady myself, versus relaxed. Or what do you do with their hands? I'm going to show you in a second. The other thing is using the S curve. You guys know, all know what the S curve is? more for female than men. It's when the woman's body kind of has that curve to it as opposed to just being like straight up and down. I tried to find an example of an S curve to show you because I built this presentation just with my laptop and I don't have a whole lot of photos. That was the best I could come up with. <laughs> there. 
that is an S curve. Now, now you know. All right. Um, so uh, posing. This is Kennedy, a friend of ours' daughter, um, and I had her pose there. I had her hands down like this. I thought it was more interesting. I also moved her hands up into a different position, but she has a place for her hands. Um, our friend uh, Mora, she's a water polo player, so they had the water polo ball. I had her hold it. Again, it gives a place for her hands. It gives her something to hold, um, which kind of helps. And same thing here, sitting on this rock. I had her cross her hands. This one here, her hands are down. And then we did another shot where I had to cross her arms. And I tend to do that a lot with people where I have their cross her arms because it gives it a place where they're not just like hanging. I don't like that look. Composition, think about depth of field. When you're shooting, think about your aperture. Do you want to shoot at 2.8 and everything can go out of focus? At the Met, if we're there and that's a cool building and you want to show more of it in the background, maybe you want to shoot at 5.6 or f8. We're going to talk about that today. Choosing the right lens for the job is very important. I brought the 70 to 200 and the 24 to 105 with me today. Part of it's because I came from California. I don't want to bring like 20 lenses, but those two should do the job. But I will use them differently depending on what I'm shooting. Don't always shoot centered. Sometimes it's not that you shouldn't. It's just you want to do a variety. Think about the rule of thirds. Maybe have them off center. Shoot from above. Shoot from below. Try different looks and tilt the camera. Don't be afraid to tilt the camera. So here's a shot I did on Saturday of a couple at the beach. It's off-centered, rule of thirds. I also shot them centered. This is a senior portrait I did, that same one in Stanford. I went, I stood up on a wall and shot down on her. And I love the fact that she's kind of looking up. It's a different look. This one here, I was actually on the ground shooting up at her. And most importantly for today is have fun. Anyway, let's roll out of here, and um, we'll meet there at Lincoln Center, all right? Whether you're a hobbyist or a professional, b &H has the answers to your questions. Experience a world of technology at our New York City Superstore. Connect with us online or give us a call. Our staff of experts is happy to help.